All right, welcome back everyone to the channel. If you're new, then welcome in. My name is Gerardo. We're gonna be talking about Hex and the fact that it's approaching its fair value according to our model, right? You can come up with your own models and to each analyst, their own discretion in terms of what fair value actually means, but we'll define that, kind of review what that means, give you a general overview of all of our charts at lookinhex.com. First link always in the description below. But with that said, Welcome in, let's talk about some of the important facts to start off, like the fact that we're at $104 billion market cap, absolutely insane. I saw someone on Twitter earlier today say that this is the highest market cap that any coin other than Bitcoin or Ethereum has reached. I think they pointed out that the highest market cap BNB ever reached was not, was nowhere, um, was not actually what Hex reached, right? So that's a pretty cool metric that I'm, I haven't confirmed, but if whoever said that on Twitter fact check that, then that's really cool. It, it means it's the third crypto in the world to ever achieve such a market cap. Uh, I don't know. If you like market cap, you like you think it's an impressive, good, big number to market the project, then hey, there you go. It's a $100 billion valuation for this idea that is Hex. Right, we've seen we've seen bigger numbers before for other things like Apple, Amazon. Those are already worth trillions, right? We saw Bitcoin be worth uh, one point something trillion at its peak. So to think something like Hex can't be, um, you know, a few trillion in terms of market cap, I don't see why not. But that's where we are sitting right now, eighteen point something cents. It depends on where you check. It's about eighteen cents flat here on Hex USDC, the thickest liquidity pair of Hex in the world which contains about 45 million hex or so and about 8.2 million USDC. I, I remember not that long ago when there were hundreds of millions of hex and I was like, dang, I sure would like to have 100 million of that. But now it's like you can't even get that much on the markets. It's looking like. Now, if you look at our actual total liquidity across V2 and V3, this is our liquidity tab, which I'm still working on being able to share this, so just stay tuned for that. But about 86.6 million, let's zoom in here. I've had complaints on this <laughs> this chart specifically. Uh, yeah, that's probably better. About 86.7 million hex liquid, which means like that's what's available on the market. Unless someone decides to provide more liquidity, this is what you get, right? 86 million hex, total liquidity across, again, V2 and V3, both the USDC and the ETH pairs, we're looking at approximately $43 million. So there you go. There you go, that's total liquidity. Obviously the bid outweighs the asks because of that huge buy wall that's waiting around the, I can't remember, five, six penny region. Huge buy wall, just there just in case, kind of like a safety net in my opinion. That's why you see the bid outweigh the ask and you can see that also on the chart down here, how it's more green than red. Obviously, our USDC liquidity is much, much thicker than our ETH liquidity by a factor of seven, right? About seven eighths of all hex liquidity is in USDC and one eighth in Ether. And like I mentioned in a previous stream or video, the V3 liquidity is slightly over 52% and V2 liquidity about 47, meaning V3 has more hex liquidity, which is pretty interesting. Mm -hmm, it's pretty interesting. I'm sure that huge buy wall had something to do with it. But we like to look at our liquidity calculator sometimes. I won't get too deep into this because I know we want to talk about the fact that we're approaching our fair value. But let's just have some fun here. You saw I input here an X of 30 cents. This is just a random variable. It's not a multiple. So it's the price that you just input a price here is what I'm trying to say. So if you input 30 cents, it tells you the remaining ROI until 30 cent hex is 1.66. And the actual dollar input required based on these liquidities is $4.5 million. And I have this one over here, kind of like as a fixed one that I just like to keep unchanged, which is the remaining ROI until $1 hex, which is a 5.52x. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you know this has been, it's been as high as, what, like 20x or more when I created this. Yeah, we'd have to look back at the uh, the, the first liquidity video I made on hex. It's, it's probably super easy to find, but, yeah, I mean, it's cool to see that it's only five X away, five and a half X away to be specific to reach a dollar. And the input required for that would be about $21 million or so. 
So very cool. And you can also input a dollar amount specifically of input and see what the final hex price would be and what the ROI multiple uh, would be. So let's just say $1 million. That much of an input would move price about 13% and you would end up with a price of about 20.5 cents per hex. So very cool. And you would definitely be able to track these sort of buys with the whale hex spot, hex whale, whale hex spot on Twitter. Just look that up and you'll know it, they have a few thousand subs and they pretty much just tweet out when a big purchase or a big a sale is made or a huge stake is staked or unstaked. But let's actually get into the fair value model, right? If you've been watching the videos for a while, you know what the fair value model is. You can find it on lookinthex.com forward slash fair value. You click on this tab and you end up here. So let's zoom in here so I can show you what I'm talking about. So mathematically speaking, all this pink curve, this fair value is, is the lifetime moving average. So if we have 614 data points like we do for price, then this is just a 16 and 614 day moving average, the pink curve, the fair value. So you could call it a lifetime moving average, I guess. You pretty much just take the average of all the days on the hex chart and you get this number. And that number is about 20 cents. So about 20 cents or so. So it looks like we touched the fair value um, or almost touched it actually because we went to like 19 cents earlier today. If you look at the high, 19.379 was our high of the day, which these candles, these daily candles are the highest we've ever closed by the way. Yeah, August 18th because previously we had a wick and then we have one red candle, the first one after a series of six, seven, eight green candles in a row. I think the most we've ever seen is like 10 or 11 in a row. But we have eight candles in a row. Now we're printing a red one. We still have about less than a day left until this one finishes. But keep in mind, this is all-time high territory. And so I just wanted to point that out. That's that's 19.4 cents, whereas our fair value is sitting at around 20 cents. And this green curve is our midline. It's the same green curve on our regression rainbow. So... And I pointed out how this fair value oscillates around the midline quite nicely, which tells me this is a good model. Just in my opinion, obviously this won't hold forever. Um, the ether regression rainbow held for its first three years or so. So we're about 1.6, 1.7 years in with hex as a coin, its age, right? And so I, I would ex not expect, but I wouldn't be surprised if this model held similar to the regression rainbow for the first three years of its existence. And then obviously maybe we start seeing some diminishing returns and we'll adjust our models accordingly once we have those data points. And if you wanna look at this from the perspective of if you're the green curve, it looks like this. Everything else is relative to you. And this is where we are again, almost approaching our firm value. And if you look at everything relative to the fair value, then you see that we're almost approaching it, right? The green curve is slightly above it. So just, just a little different perspectives you can take, but it's it's interesting, it's cool to say the least that price has been hugging it and almost attracted to it like a magnet for the past, what is this, 522 all the way to now, for the past almost 100 days, right? So for the past three months, you see we had our nice little run up into this level, got rejected, we had another nice run up, stopped at that level, got rejected, had another nice run up into that level, got rejected, and now we're running back up into it. So it's like this nice little magnet that keeps pulling you towards it. But obviously what a lot of people would hope for is a nice bubble above the fair value because we've seen that um, honestly just once, right? Over here, once we had this wild run up, which everyone remembers, this was the run up that brought a bunch of adoption. It's where we saw the, um, the famous Godwill come in. It's where liquidity I believe started increasing at that point you know it kind of got that hype of that summer DeFi bubble and this was a really really exciting time this was last April and May so a little over decent amount over a year ago almost a year and a half at this point but um yeah that was our only real bubble that we had above these kind of fair value levels right because we ran up to it here got rejected ran up to it here 
kind of oscillated beneath it and then had our bubble, wrote it for a little bit, rejected, ran up to it, rejected, up to it, rejected. Took a while before getting back up to it, but we've been rejected every single time. Rejected, like, look at that. So that's one model. Um, so keep a lookout on this one. I like this one a lot. And currently our midline is sitting at around 25 cents. So that falls in line with our TA, if you remember of our technical targets are 25 to 55 cents, depending on how conservative or bullish you are. I should probably remove some decimals from this quarterly ROI. That's a, it's too much, too many decimals. Uh, but I wanted to point out this one because quarter three has been interesting. It's kind of thrown us for a, for a loop here where it started off pretty much flat came up to this level where you know it was our highest performing quarter to date for one two three four days or so and then it came beneath our our actual highest performing quarter to date now looking back and kind of just went sideways crossed down beneath all of these quarters now it's recovering and it looks like it's on track right still a little below average just to be just to be transparent we're only only up 2.4x this quarter However, the average is about 3.5x and the average for the next, you know, um, 20 to 30 days is about 3 to 3.5x. So it definitely gives Hex time to continue chugging along and finding its way up into potentially these levels. I just really, it's just really interesting, man. Like look at all these quarters that end up around these levels from about you know, three to seven X. It's just interesting. This is a really interesting uh, chart in my opinion, but we're, we've been profitable every single quarter. They're all above one. This one level is your make or break, right? Like even these quarters that were kind of slow and were really just accumulation regions in retrospect, even these came up out of the depths and closed at, you know, 24% and 28% profitability respectively for the quarter. Remember a quarter is only 90 days. So yeah, this is a good one to show to businesses or institutions that want to hold crypto on their balance sheet, right? Profitable every single quarter. I mean, it's a hard pitch. I mean, it's an easy pitch. It's a hard pitch to pass, pass on. So that's that. Um, feel free to share this with anyone you think might find it useful. This is a rather new one, our lifetime maximum ROI. I really like this one and I'll explain why because it really emphasizes the differences in profitability in ROI with or without staking. And staking is optional at the end of the day. I really want everyone to understand that because maybe, just maybe, that wasn't made clear enough and therefore people misunderstood the whole, the whole idea of Hex in the first place and are, are able to use that FUD of, well, you can't even access your money. So like, is it real, blah, blah, blah. You know, you know what I'm talking about. You've probably seen your fair share of arguments, discussions on kind of the, the legitimacy of Hex, right? And so just making sure that people know staking is optional. You can stake a day, 15 years, or you can just not stake at all. But I think these charts are cool because they show the difference, right? They show the real difference. This first chart is just purely before staking lifetime ROI. We have our 10,000 X up here. We have our sort of ceiling function, which just maxes out at every new all time high. And then you're running ROI from the all time low basically. So it's saying right now that the maximum ROI that Hex has seen has been in just pure price, 3,867, right? And these are just daily closes. They don't count hourly wicks. However, currently our current ROI is about 3,329. Right, just slightly beneath our all-time high, but we are pretty much, um, pretty much there, closely approaching it. And if we do break our all-time high, it's probably a good time to point this out because we're close. We're approaching this 20 cent fair value level. Then this blue curve would start ratcheting it up. Right, it's a ceiling function, so it would kind of just follow the the all-time high, like you see over here, until it stops out. So interesting to see. But if you see after staking what your max ROI could have been, it's actually 7,140. It's a lot. And currently sitting at around, what is that, like 7,028x? Yeah, so you're about 7,000x up 
if you would say like bought all, at the all-time low, this is the maximum ROI that anyone could have possibly ever seen in the system with, with com like combining price appreciation versus the dollar as well as interest from staking, right? So I just absolutely love this chart. And the beauty about this ceiling function, this pink one, um, in, in contrast to this one, this one actually moves up every single day because assuming someone, let's say, bought the bottom and is staked, right? The fact that they're gaining interest means the guy who has the max ROI, his max ROI is increasing every single day because he's gaining interest. So it's deceiving because it looks flat, but if you actually track the pink curve, you see that it increases every single day. So this pink curve only goes up. It literally doesn't even go flat. So I think this pink curve is probably my favorite ever, favorite chart ever. It's just, it's, it combines the hex price. It looks at, it's like a max out version of the t-shirt price. Think of the t-shirt price, but it's, uh, with, with a ceiling function, it's just beautiful. I love it. So check it out. If, if you want to give it a chance, if you haven't yet, look into hex.com forward slash max ROI and just watch this increase every single day. It's at 7,140 right now. So, you know, it'll reach 10,000 X at some point, even if we don't reach an all time high, that's the beauty. It assumes, it assumes the optimal scenario of buying at the bottom, selling at the top and being, you know, staked that whole time. It's just assuming that. So has, if anyone has actually realized that is a different question, but it's like the maximum possible ROI in the system. So I love that. And just so that I didn't put all four on the same chart, I kind of did all the permutations. So you can see just the ceiling functions together before and after staking and see how they differ. And you can see just the running ROI before and after staking without the ceiling functions. So you can see it in all ways, right? You can just look at purely before staking, both running and max, purely after staking, both running and max, or purely max, both before and after staking, purely running before and after staking. I hope that makes sense. So if we look at our heat maps, moving on to the next model, again, this is just the video where we're looking at all our look and hex models. So this is our 100 day moving average weekly percent change heat map. It's a mouthful. I just like to call it the heat map because it's the only one we have on the site right now. And so again, we've seen regions where in the past we reached purple and pink. This is different from our regression rainbow purple and pink, by the way, that one is actually at the very bottom. It's this one. So when it says extension from bit, that's on our regression rainbow. Mm, maybe I should just call it regression rainbow heat map. So it's not as confusing. Yeah, I might just call it that. So we're going to update that. You'll probably see that once the, uh, once this video is live, but just a hundred days specifically, this heat map is sort of our, our risk metric. We also call it. And we are currently just about yellow, right? We're still yellow. We saw a little green peak. These peaks have just been in the green, but we haven't seen a bubble like this yet. And I can imagine a bubble where we do reach pink region. This would correspond to maybe a bubble above our fair value or something like that, right? Now you see models kind of converging. And this one is just, it's really just based on the slope of the 100 day moving average. If you're a math guy and you want to know, literally just go to V1 and apply the 100 day moving average. Let's get rid of all this. Grab you 100 day MA and it's literally just looking at the slope of this, right? So there you go. You see that the maximum slope was over here where it was just absolutely tearing, just going up almost straight. And you see how the slope is not as high right now, right? It's just not. So if slope were to start matching this, then that's what this model is fit to, right? It would become pink at that point if the slope started matching it or going even more steep, right? Even steeper. So that's what this model describes. And this is the exact same model on a linear scale without the color coding. So this up here corresponds to this pink bubble up here. And you can see that currently we're here where it's really just this kind of yellowish green level, which we've seen, for example, right before our, our actual explosive move up, right? So before our explosive move up, we were around this level, around the 23 to 30% risk level. And right now we're sitting at around 23%. So it looks good. 
That looks good to me. Um, yeah, it, if it starts getting into the purple, blue, pink regions, then I'd be like, it's time to be a little more cautious. Not necessarily I'll sell it, but more cautious in terms of maybe I'm not buying in as large amounts as I, as I would have, right? Maybe you want to wait until it cools off. So I don't know, not financial advice, just, just kind of what I see in the charts. But again, this is our kind of regression rainbow heat map. And then I show it here as well. It's the exact same as the extension from fit, except on a linear scale. I feel like it just, it just looks different. And I think having multiple perspectives, like a linear scale and a log scale, just gives you an idea of how, how wild things can get because those bubbles that we see on a log scale, we forget to realize that on a linear scale, they, they are significant, right? This is normalized to the, there's one level up here at the peak. So if we were to start reaching these levels, you know, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 1, then I'd be like, all right, guys, maybe ease off on the 100K million buys or maybe not actually send it full send. What, what am I talking about? Right? Let's, I don't mind if you guys absolutely just break my models to the upside. Feel free, feel free. So Hexer's BTC RY from launch. This is one of my favorites, at least top three favorite models. And you can see that we're on track, not on track. We're, we're kicking, it's kicking its ass, man. Like 373 X from launch day and Bitcoin at this point in time was only 56 X up from launch day, right? It, it didn't reach 373 X until day 950 something, right? And we're only on day 612. So a nice 50% speed bonus on hex relative to BTCs historical performance you can see here normalized to bitcoin so if you know if this is from the perspective of bitcoin and you see that yeah i mean we're just outperforming this is the highest this index has been 6.6x right these peaks back here were about 4. Point something this last peak was 6.4x and currently we're at 6. Point, ooh 6.8x yesterday 6.6x today so super nice the same chart for hex versus eth all right, from launch, we're absolutely crushing that. Uh, Ether, right? Uh, Ether, 612 days into its launch, was 25x up, and Hex is 373x up. So, yeah, it took um, Ethereum first 800 days or so. So, again, we're faster than Ethereum as well. Normalized to Ethereum, it's not at an all time high, interestingly enough. Our peak was recently at around 32x. Currently, we're sitting at a 14, almost 15x. Pretty interesting. And that makes sense, right? Because during this time, it, we're really looking at the gap between these two. So as this gap gets smaller, this is going to go down. And if pink ever crosses beneath the green, then pink crosses beneath the green here as well, and so on. So so we'll, we'll keep an eye on all of these. Obviously, our shares tab is full of good info if you're a staker. For example, our share rate. Obviously, only ratchets up, 18,470 hex per T-share. You can keep track of the value of T-share or the T-share market cap, right? Our payout per T-share, our average payout per T-share, total T-share. It's just a bunch, right? The staking participation in the system, your average APY, just how much of hex value exists right now, which is about 74% almost, and... 26% of that is in the future in the form of shares, which are only redeemable for their full amount once the promised amount of time that was committed when you hit the button, only once that is met. So I feel like this is a very interesting indicator of how much value is kind of here now and how much is in the future for the system. Now, the all famous regression rainbow, the absolute signature chart of this channel uh, one of my favorites, definitely a top three model as well. You can see that our, on our equidistant model, we are above the yellow, right? We've been oscillating around yellow ever since May. Pretty interesting. Similar to our fair value model, right? Ever since May, we've been kind of holding this as a nice magnet or fair value. Ever since May, we've been oscillating around yellow. Pretty interesting. And our recent peak of 20, of 17 to 18 cents, was wait interesting to the green level it actually hit the green level um 
interesting because we're, we're at a higher price now on this chart but we're not even at the green yet because the green is always increasing so currently green is sitting at around 25 cents very nice and uh, if we scroll down and normalize it so basically just flatten the rainbow and then look at what ether did on its regression rainbow right we've plotted a whole regression rainbow for ether and uh, and I can show it to you guys real quick ETH rainbow. Let me zoom out and find it. Mm -hmm. Let's look for it. Boom, there you go. So this is the ETH regression rainbow to show you what it did. And very interesting that its maximum extension was also about 20x above. I don't want to rant too much about the math side of things, but all you have to know is not only does ETH, did ETH kind of respect a sort of similar regression rainbow, but the regression rainbow is so similar in the sense that it spans the same amount of multiples, which in this case, it's about 20 X, meaning this pink curve is about 20 X above the red curve at all times. And similar to hex, they are literally just, just a few percent points away, which blows my mind. And yeah, I feel like it's fair to point it out. And then once you normalize ether and underlay it to the hex extension from fit, you see this beauty right here, which, it just gives you a nice a nice idea of where we could be headed, right? And I've touched on this multiple times where we had this kind of initial dump down into red region, first spike, but notice that on Ether it only reached purple. Very interesting. And then, again, you can see it here. Ether only reached purple. However, Hex reached pink. We came back down with a bunch of lower highs and lower lows until we reached kind of what would become the data to make our fit down here in the red zones. And then once we bounce off of the red, it's an absolute tear, right? It was different because on on hex you kind of see this bull flag formation, whereas on on ether you saw this kind of like exponential looking uh, a little move right there, a little seahorse. <laughs> so one really amazing thing I want to point out about this chart is that currently, if you look at the white curve, the hex extension, and the eth extension, which is that pink dotted curve they're literally right on top of each other. Like, like go to the site yourself. And they are both sitting at 3.37. Meaning, Hex is literally repeating history. It's not even like, oh, look, this is close. Right now, at this point in time, August 18th, 2020, Hex is the exact same amount extended from its regression rainbow as ether was to its regression rainbow this many days in about 620 days from launch or so blows my mind it just blows my mind 3.37 on both of them yeah and you saw what happened you saw what happened with ether it rallied up into the pink and at this rate it puts us in the pink october specifically october 21st and again, if you look at pink on October 21st, I've showed you guys multiple times, this doesn't move $2.33. So that's a very, very bullish scenario. This is, this is my fractal thesis, all right? So if you guys hear me saying like, oh, I hope my fractal plays out, this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the regression rainbow fractal. I'm talking about a bubble up into the pink region because Hex has done it before and it's almost repeating exactly what Ether did. Obviously not exactly the same, right? If you just compare them, it's not the same curve, but general trajectory in terms of these macro up and down trends, it looks way too similar to ignore. And then down here, you can choose to space the, the actual regression lines by Fibonacci ratios versus just equidistant, right? This one is pretty and equidistant and same, same spacing is what that means. Whereas this one is like the spacing is not equal, but they're spaced by what some people would consider to be significant mathematical ratios. And so you can see that we're actually above yellow on this one too. So code yellow, I guess. Yeah, code yellow, we've crossed on both the Fibonacci and the equidistant. And um, the, the ETH extension underlaid is the exact same. The only thing that changes is these colored levels, right? So there you go. That was pretty much the video, 30 minute video. Hope you guys stuck around. Let me know if you enjoy these kind of longer videos, 30 minutes, or if you enjoy them a little shorter, maybe 12 minutes, or do you enjoy the live streams the most where I'm here for like 
two hours before my camera dies. Let me know. Um, leave a like if you enjoyed this kind of content on hex, quantitative, qualitative, technical, fundamental, hybrid analysis, including pulse chain, and ho hopefully um, that launches soon so we can talk about some other cool charts, right? Uh, but yeah, with that said, leave a thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff, share the video if you find value in it and you think someone else might get value from it as well. Um, I guess I'll just leave you with this here, right? I mean, things can get heated really quickly. And that's all I'm gonna say, that's all I'm gonna say. We're approaching our fair value, approaching 20 cents. Hopefully this fractal plays out if you're a bull, right? If you're on team bull. But um, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video, all right? Peace.